Okay, so let us now we are going to see how we get the tomato frequency and how we get the frequency if we are given tomato frequency. But please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now we say we can convert now the unbooked data to the booked data. So in this example, we are going to see how do I convert this now to this table. This is what we call the tomato frequency table, and there you now get the data grouped. So CF for the tomato frequency is obtained by continuously adding the previous frequency to the next frequency based on the past frequency. We are going to see it there. Use the table below to answer the questions that follow. They are giving us this data, they are giving us all these ones, they are giving us a construct, the distribution table, actually the class interval, the class boundary, then the model weight, meaning that these were weights. So how would I do? Now to get how do I do this? I will need to get the frequency, but we first get the time. The time is what is going to help us simplify this into this. How do we go about it? Now, here this is how we go about it. So this 10, when you cancel 10, you come here. 10 is between 10 and 14. So you put there a stroke or a stick. Then when you cancel the next one is 16. 16 is between 15 and 19, that's where 16 is. When you come to 6, 6 is between 5 and 9, that is where it falls. When I come to, you cancel 21. We cancel that we don't repeat it again. So 21 is between 20 and 24. 25 is 25 and that is the class where it falls. Then when I cancel 8, 8 is falling between 5 and 9. This is where my 8 is. Then my 12 is between 10 and 14. Then 17 is between 5, 15 and 19. Then 13 is between 10 and 14. Then 5. 5 is here in this class. When I come now to 23, 23 is between 20 and 24. Then 15. My 15 is between this and that. Then when I come to my 8, my 8 is here. When I come to now 19, 19 is falling here. When I come to 13, it's between 10 and this is my 13. When I come to 12, 12 is here also. Now, when they are five, you tell them. So you put this one now horizontally like this. So this means that this bundle is having five. So then I come to 18. 18 is between 15 and this. They are also five. I tell. So that is the bundle of five. Then I come to 21. 21 is here. I come now to 11. 11 is here. Now when I come to 27, 27 is here. Now, these ones are helping us to get the frequency. How do I get the frequency? You just count them. These are 1, 2, 3, 4. So here we have the frequency as 4. Here, then we say that this is 5, then plus 1, that is 6. Here we have 5. The only question is that that is having 5. Then this one is having 3. And this one, they are 2. So, it's that when you add these ones, you should be getting the total number. The number here is print because this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 times 4, you get 20. So when you try to add these ones, you should get 20. Anyway, so from there now, we can get the temperature frequency. If you have the frequency now, you can get the temperature frequency. How? The first frequency here is always the first temperature frequency there. To get the next temperature frequency, you add this plus this will get the next, which will be 10. Now to get the next, you get this plus this, you get the next frequency there, which will be 15. To get the next, you get 15 plus 13, you will be having 18. Then to get this, you get this plus this, you will be having 20. So that's how you get the temperature frequency, as simple as that. Then from there, they are asking us that also the distribution table. Now we need to get also the class boundaries. But before that, they want us to get the class interval. 
the class interval, part D, the class interval. Commandment one, class interval. How do you get the class interval? Class interval, we always say it's going to be now the line minus the lower five, then plus one, which is going to be, this is going to be four plus one, this is going to be a five. It's the same as the if you say 14 minus 10, then we always add one. Amendment two, class boundaries. Class boundaries. Class boundaries. Now we say the class boundaries, we need what we call the adjustment factor. So our AA, how do we get the adjustment factor? Adjustment factor. How do we get this factor? That we subtract and we add. We always get you get this. You get this minus this divided by or this. This minus this by two, then all this minus this then by two, all this minus this then by two. That's why you got the adjustment factor. So it's the same as ten minus nine over two, which will be the same as also fifteen minus fourteen over two. So that's why we get the adjustment factor. Or twenty minus nineteen over two. And this is going to give you 0 0.5. Now, after getting the 0 0.5, now we subtract here 0 0.5. Now we get the class boundaries. You subtract now the first class boundary. So, if we have a class of 5 to 19, then its class boundary or the class is going to be you get 5 minus 0 0.5, then 2. Here on the upper, you add 0 0.5, the AF, the adjustment factor. So that's what they are going to do. This is 0 0.5. When you start with 0 0.5 at the lower, then you add 0 0.5 for the lower. Because this one you put here. So when I start with here 0 0.5, I'm going to get 4.5. Then I add here 0 0.5, which will be 9.5. I think you see this one is going to be. 4.5 now to 9.5. That's what we get. That's how we get it. Then the next, you subtract here 0 0.5, you'll be having 9.5. Then you add here 0 0.5, 9.5. The same here, subtract 0 0.5. Then add it here, 19.5. By the way, you see that. Or is what is here and what is here. I think it's that. So, mean that this one now is going to be here. So, the simple terms, this one is going to come here. Because if you start with 0 0.5 here, you get 19.5. So, this is here, 0.5, 2, you add here 2.5, I mean 0 0.5. Now, what is here is going to be the first here, the first lower, in this class. Then, you add here 0 0.5, you get. So, that's how you get the class boundaries. Then they ask us to get the model weight. Model weight, we say the model class or the model weight is going to be the one with the highest frequency. I think we see that's the one with the highest frequency. So it's 10 to 14. That's the one with the highest frequency. So that's how we handle that numbers. The class boundaries, that's how we answer them. Then from here, they are giving us now find the unknowns. They are giving us x, y, z, and w. So how can we find these unknowns? Now, this means that they are giving us the geometric frequency. How can we get the frequency if they give us here? But now, you already see that the first geometric frequency here is the frequency here. Or is the first the same as? So meaning from here, my x is very known that my x is going to be 2. So I put here now my 2. This is also 2. With is or is the first metric frequency is going to be also the same as the first frequency. Or the first frequency is the same as the first metric frequency. So how do I get y? You know to get y, we said from here, remember, we said this plus this will be equal to this value. 
So meaning that now this plus this will be equal to y. So now 2 plus 14 will be equal to y, implying that my y is going to be 16. So my y here is going to be 16. So this value here is 16. This is 14. This one was unknown. Then how do I get now this value? Now if I have this and this, remember, if we have this, we say this plus this, we get this. So meaning if I get this plus this, I will get this. So meaning if I get now y plus z, I get 14. Z plus y, I should get my fault. And remember, my y is 16 from here. Then my z will be 40 minus 16. So my z is going to be 24. So it means that this one here, the unknown value here, is 24. So this one is already known as 40. Okay, so this one is 12. And this one is missing. So this one is missing. Uh huh. So how do I get this? I know if I get this, Plus this, I get this value. So W is going to be, I get this plus this. 12 plus 40, which is going to be 52. So meaning that now my W is 52 there. Then how do I get this B? This one here, this is 60. I know that now, if I get W plus B, I get this. So from here, I said, W plus B, I get 16. How do I get my W is already 52, so my B will be 16 minus 52. So my B will be 8. So mean that this value here is 8. So that's how we get those numbers. So that's how we use now the CA calculate this value this value is. Now from there, the rest is very easy. Or Get this value here. If you know the above value, if you know this, you get this minus this will be having this. This minus this will have this. This minus this will get this. That's the other way how you can use to simplify them. So, or if you see that if you have this or is it two. So to get this, this minus this will get this. This minus this will get this. This minus this will get that. And so on. That's how you can also simplify. Now this one is the the classes are having the small points. So how, what are you going to do? We come and first get our AF, this AF, the adjustment factor. How do we get it? So from here, my AF, my AF is going to be, I told you, you get the class here minus the class here, all this minus this. So I'll be having 0 3.0 minus 2.9 divided by 2. Get the average. So the answer you get there is going to be 0 0.05. Now it means to get the classes. Now my class found that is for this one is going to be now 2.5 minus 0 0.05. Then 2 on this I add 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So 2.9 then plus 0.05. Five. So the difference is when you have the small points, it's going to be, I think you see that it's very different if you don't have the small points. But I've told you how do you calculate it. So in some of this from here, we are going to get 2.45. Then this one is going to be when we add it there, we get 2.95. I don't even know if like this one is going to be the one that is the lower here. 2.952 Then when you add here, you get 3.45 When you add this 0 0.05 This one is going to be the lower here 2 Now Then the same here is going to be Then 2 Then this one is going to be 4.05 to 4.95. So remember, that's how you get the class boundaries, that's how you get the class interval, and so on. So the class interval here, 
Now you get this. Now we, they ask us to get the class interval here. Now here we add 0 for you to 1. Let me add by the way that one so that you can see you can see how you can get the class interval. So let me add also the class width. So the class width here, if you have get our class width, how you get the class width? So Roma number 1, the class width, we get it by saying this. The class width. The class width for it is this one point you say this minus this. So 29, 2.9 minus 2.5. This time we are adding if it's one decimal place, we add 0 0.1. 0 0.1. And you see that one is going to give us 0 0.1. Five. So that is the class width there. So that's the difference between getting the class width of this one to the small press. Here we add one because it has no decimal press. Here it has one decimal press, so we divide the one by the 10 to get 0 0.1. So that's it, members. I wish you well.